Hey guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the new Elastic Deform brush. Now, this brush is new to Blender, and it's based on a physically based deforming method, which I think is called a regularized Kelvinlet, if I said that correctly. Regularized Kelvinlet, which basically performs the deformation but keeps volume intact. So I've turned off mirroring on this and I want to show you the difference between what happens when I deform this Suzanne monkey head with the grab brush versus with the elastic deform brush. So let's do something real quick. Let me switch to the grab brush. I'll hit the G key to switch to that grab brush and then I'll just pull on this eye and notice what's happened. You know, the eye has been greatly deformed. This piece is actually thinned out a bit and the volume really hasn't been kept intact. It's just kind of been pulled and grabbed and it doesn't really look real but if we switch over to the elastic deform brush which is over here on our left hand side or we could pull it up via the toolbar as well and switch into the normal grab brush deformation setting up here at the top we will take a look at all of these but for now let's just switch to the grab brush setting and then do the same thing See what happens? It has deformed the mesh, we can see that, but rather than stretching out the eye, because it wants to keep that volume intact, it has pulled the mesh and the surrounding area to keep the volume essentially the same. Now this can be really neat, especially when you're trying to just like reposition whole sections in general. Maybe we wanna make the ear a little bit longer or shorter or whatever. And this will move the mesh like you want it to move, but it won't create this weirdness here like with the grab brush or the snake hook tool. So this is actually a really cool brush that I'm, the more I get to know, the more I am really liking it. But let's take a look at the rest of the settings. So this is what the grab brush can do here. And then let's switch over to the bi scale grab over here and notice that it doesn't deform it quite as much. So the bi scale grab does apply a little bit more precision to what we are grabbing and pulling. And then we have the tri scale grab, which is the default here. And this is the most precise. So if we were to pull this down, we're actually manipulating the least amount of mesh overall, and it's moving the least distance between all of our grab bi scale grab and tri scale grab. Then we also have some really fun sets settings for scaling and twisting. So I just want to show you what these guys do because I really like them. So we have this nose and when we switch to the scale setting right here, we can just click and drag and it's just going to scale this whole thing up, you know, or down depending on, you know, where we're working. So this is just kind of fun. Maybe we want a bigger ear. We can scale up a bigger ear, maybe a bigger eye, maybe make this eye really small, you know, and you can just really kind of have some fun with this. We do have a setting here for volume preservation. So let's say what, see what happens when we kick this all the way up and jump on this ear over here. It is basically it is doing its best to keep 90% volume preservation. Whereas if we were to drop this like all the way down to say 1%, the stretching difference in mesh is pretty different. But overall, I'll probably just leave this at the 0.4 that it starts out at and not change this. And then the last setting that I wanna show you guys is the twist because this is a, like really fun. So when we click on here and drag, we're just twisting the entire mesh. In fact, maybe let me drop the brush size down a little bit. It's kind of giving us a rotate brush effect, but in a way that makes sense. So we're can, we can actually just kind of full on move this mesh and let me rotate this ear out a little bit. And so there we go. And so we can twist the brush and it's gonna keep the volume, but it's going to do the weird deformation that we like. And this can be really fun actually, like some tentacle posing. I know if you check out Blender's documentation, they show you how if you have a tentacle, you can actually use this twist setting to pose each individual part of the tentacle, kind of like I just did here. And then, you know, get yourself a weird little bendy shape of an arm without having to do any pose brush. So the elastic deform brush is going to be a great tool going forward. It's definitely going to be something I'm adding in to my toolbar, um, but that's pretty much it. So give this a try, have fun playing around with it. And otherwise the rest of these settings are basically the same as the other brushes. We just have to play around with the deformation. But like I said, it starts at a tri-scale grab. And for the most part, you can leave it there. All right, guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video.